Thanks for watching this video today. My name is Darren O'Shea. I am the owner of PowerBricks.com. Today we are going to be showing you how easy it is to install a generic optical drive into a manufacturer's laptop. The main thing that you need to know when you're doing this is what type of a bezel or faceplate you have on the optical drive. And if you are not switching out the faceplate, then it, you need to be sure that the dimensions of the faceplate that comes with the optical drive will fit in the opening of the computer that you are installing it into. I'll be using a Dell Latitude D610 computer that we had here in the office to uh, illustrate how easy this is to switch out. Now all computers are different. The Dell Latitudes make it pretty easy to eject the drive. There's a lever that you push in and you can pull the drive out. A lot of times your particular computer will have a screw underneath the computer that you'll need to remove in order to pull the drive out. But there is a small hole in the faceplate of all optical drives that you can push the end of a paper clip into and it will eject the drive slightly. Okay, we've gone ahead and gotten a paper clip to illustrate this. So I just bend the paper clip out and I will insert it into the hole in the faceplate and uh, sometimes you have to press a little bit harder until you feel it release. There we go. And then this comes out. And so a lot of times once you've released a screw that held the back of the drive into place in your computer, the whole the whole drive can pull out this way. Okay. So we'll take a look at this Dell drive here. This one's got a gray plastic housing that fits all the way around the optical drive itself. Now inside of this plastic housing is nothing but this generic drive. They make them fit really standard. Okay, to do this we, uh, we, we use a miniature screwdriver. Uh, this was a Phillips point here. We picked up these Husky screwdriver sets at like Home Depot or Lowe's. Real handy. I think we also sell uh, one or two different uh, types of these screws on the PowerBricks.com website. Um, if you don't have it, you definitely need it. So one thing. Okay, so the drive in this case will typically have several screws spaced around the drive that have to be removed in order to take the plastic housing off. So you just have to take a look at yours and determine what your, your own needs are. And uh, be sure to do this on top of the table. If you don't, the screw will definitely fall onto the floor and you will never see it again. So, I've done these a few times. I am rather familiar with them, but this is a very simple process. So I'm just removing these screws all the way all the way around as I go. See those two long ones that I just took out of the back. I guess I should probably take note of that. There's one on the side. I think there's going to be one more underneath. Oh, that's another short one. Going to be one more back behind this latch mechanism. So better go ahead and pull that latch mechanism out. Uh, that's a medium, medium length screw. Always good when you're taking your computer apart to keep track of where the screws go. So we'll get inside there and take out this last screw. Okay, so there's four short screws on the sides. Alright, with any luck, I can remove this drive from the housing. There's an IDE connector right here that is just pressed into place in the back. You can see the IDE connector on the back of the optical drive. And in this case, the Dell drive has one that fits right in there. Uh, sometimes this connector is built right into your computer, so there won't be anything on the back of the optical drive. Alright, so this was the Dell drive. I am going to eject the, the drive mechanism here. What I need to do is remove the bezel. So I will take my Husky screwdriver here and now that this this particular one I know that I just need to apply a little bit of pressure there to open up a slot here to allow my my bezel to come off and then 
this particular one, I just roll it off. I just, you know, work it out a little bit, kind of bending it just a little bit as I, as I pull it out, and it releases these hooks that just hook, hook on a plastic anchors on the inside of the drive plate. So this is what's really important. There's a lot of these different bezels out there, and if the bezel is not the same as the one that's on your computer, then you are not going to be able to transfer your faceplate onto the new replacement drive that you receive. And that's where I mentioned that it could be important to know whether a drive, for example this one, the faceplate is the exact same width and height as the drive itself. So if your computer would accept that without any problem, it might not fit it just perfectly, but it would install fine and it would function great. It might save you a lot of money over perhaps going to the manufacturer to buy one that has the correct faceplate on it. Okay, so what we're going to do now is take the generic drive. I'm going to eject the mechanism here. There we go. And take this faceplate off also. There we go. Real easy there. Got to be patient when you're working on your computer. Take anything too hard and too fast. Uh, can cause a little bit of damage, but if you just take it slow and easy, you'll uh, get the job done every time without any problem. So I'm going to roll this right back on there, just the same as I took it off, and then push this last one into place. There it goes, it snapped into place. So I've just transferred the faceplate over to that housing, and we will just put this back together. This is where all those toys is as an infant come in handy here, you can make sure the shapes all fit together. There we go. And take the screwdriver. Use some gravity here to keep the screw on the screwdriver. Just look in there and guide it into the hole. Screw that puppy into place. See, I was glad I was working on a table. So we're just keeping track of where these screws went back into. Always important. Try to put too long of a screw someplace, then it may actually prevent a mechanical mechanism for not working like the drive door closing all the way or some other issue. Okay, I think at this point we just need to install the latch mechanism again and screw that into place. Okay. There we go, we got our drive completely back together again. Okay, so that was it. We transferred the housing. At this point we can take the reassembled drive, reinsert it into the computer. Should be doing all this with the computer turned off. I would even suggest taking the battery out and uh, make sure you don't have it plugged into the wall at that time. Okay, so that's ready to go. Just a quick note here before we wrap it up. Um, in this case, I installed a DVD plus minus rewritable dual layer optical drive with light scribe capability into this Dell. I could have replaced a standard optical drive, a DVD drive, maybe a DVD CDRW combo drive. Um, the computer will recognize it and the computer will typically be able to play CDs and read CDs off of any optical drive that's installed in it. What you will need to ensure that you have though is DVD viewing software, DVD recording software, and of course um, CDRW recording software if uh, you're just upgrading to CDRW. If you do not have these, you will not be able to take advantage of the drive. A lot of times these are available for uh, free download from different sites like 2Cows or CNET.com uh, downloads, um, or many of our drives at PowerBricks.com are provided complete with the manufacturer's installation CD, which would include things like Power DVD and Nero Express. Well, thank you very much for watching this, and I hope it was helpful to you.